today we're going to go through the three things that cause every pimple and how to treat them naturally. And if you hang around till the end, I'll even tell you of the product that you probably already have in your pantry that's going to reduce all three. When I first went to my doctor for my breakouts, he told me that there were three underlying causes of acne. On my mission to heal myself naturally, I went home and I researched how to attack each one and now here I am teaching others how to do the same to cure their acne. If we haven't met yet, my name is Madison Don't and I am a science graduate, avid researcher, biology teacher and naturopathy student. So let's go over the first thing behind every pimple. So this is the overproduction of oil called sebum. Now my first video was actually on this topic, um, so I won't repeat everything that I said in that one, but if you are interested in learning more, then make sure that you go check that out. But basically an overproduction of sebum is caused by an excess of testosterone. So basically sebum is super important in our skin. However, an overproduction can actually cause dead skin cells to clog up our hair follicles and then and that's where how we get the pimple. This is why older people don't get as many pimples because when you age, you actually produce less sebum. So what we didn't cover in that first video was how to reduce excess sebum naturally. So the way that I do it is with a special cleanser. So I use the Cetaphil Acne Prone Purple Cleanser and I do that in the morning and at nighttime. So it's very important that you find the right cleanser for your skin because what a lot of them do is they strip too much oil away. And then what happens is because sebum is super important in moisturizing your skin, your skin actually makes more sebum to counteract the dryness that that cleanser makes you feel and therefore you haven't fixed the problem because your skin actually ends up making more. So the second thing that you can do is make sure that you find yourself a good moisturizer. So I used to think years ago that moisturizers made my skin even more oily, but that was just because I wasn't using the right one. And once I found a moisturizer that really worked with my skin, then when I put it under my makeup, at the end of the day, I wasn't feeling like I was just covered in oil and it just didn't look nice. What I did find that really worked for me, um, which I didn't start using until six weeks after I'd gone to the doctor, was the Biology BD Serum. So I'm gonna do a proper review on that one shortly, but if you are already on my Instagram, then you will see me talk about that one a lot. And that serum uh, really did wonders for my skin. It's really hydrating and it's all natural. The active ingredients in it are really good at brightening and it just did really, really well at clearing my face as well. Another hot tip to get rid of the excess oil on your face is also to wash with a warm washer every single morning. So my morning routine, as soon as I get out of bed, consists of me going to the bathroom and putting the tap on um, quite warm and you don't need to go crazy and just like full on exfoliate your face. Just the nice gentle um, brush of the washer just does a really, really good job. So another tip that is really going to help your excess oil production is also to make sure that you have a diet rich in vegetables. So those vitamins and minerals are gonna be super important in fixing your gut health and therefore fixing your skin. One that has been proven to have a direct effect on decreasing excess sebum is also zinc. So zinc is antibacterial, zinc is anti-inflammatory, um, and it actually has been shown to be lower in those people with acne, so they are deficient, but zinc is just an excellent one to make sure that you're getting in your diet. If you wanna check out how I supplement with zinc, then I will pop up on the screen now my last video, which talked about the best supplements for acne. And on the gut health topic, my last tip for this one is also just to make sure that you have a lot of prebiotics and probiotics um, to make sure that you are really trying to maintain your gut health, which I will also talk about a bit more later. Okay, so the next thing behind every pimple is actually the P. acne bacteria themselves. So the reason why they're called P. acne is 
kind of like the same reason that we're called Homo sapiens. So Homo is our genus name and sapiens is our species name. So P. acne bacteria, the P stands for Propione bacterius, I think. I don't know, it's hard to pronounce, but the acne is the species name. So these are the bacteria that live on our skin um, and when we have an overproduction of sebum caused by an excess of testosterone clogging the dead skin cells, that's when the P. acne bacteria can really snuggle down into our hair follicles and then cause a pimple. While acne itself is not life-threatening, the mental health issues that come as a result of it are often overlooked. So these can include a decreased self-esteem, anxiety, depression, and social withdrawal. So to kill acne bacteria naturally, you wanna look for things with antibacterial properties. So a really great one is tea tree oil, and I actually have a diffuser near uh, my bed. And so what I would do is just have tea tree oil going just before bed every night, um, just to kind of put that antibacterial property out into uh, the space where I will be sleeping for the next couple of hours. Another one that's really good to have in products is aloe vera. So aloe vera is antibacterial as well, but it's also anti-inflammatory and it holds a lot of water. So it's also really hydrating. On top of that, just reducing the oil in general is going to make it harder for those little guys to bunker down in your pores. So by doing all the tips that I talked about for reducing excess sebum production, it should also really, really help to avoid those bacteria. Okay, so the last of the three that's behind every pimple is inflammation. Now, despite what many people might think, even though inflammation usually represents that there is a problem, the inflammation itself is actually your body's way of trying to help you. So it's basically your body going to war and releasing its soldiers, so the white blood cells are your soldiers, pumping them through your blood to the area that you need it most. And that's what causes the inflammation. But really it's just your white blood cells showing up to the party so that they can get rid of the foreign invaders. And when inflammation does show up, I know it's annoying because everything swells, but it's really your body's way of trying to protect you. So you really should be saying thank you. Now, inflammation occurs when the oil and dead skin cells and P. acne bacteria are making themselves at home in the hair follicle, but the buildup becomes so large that it actually ruptures that follicle and breaches the external barrier that is your skin. This is where inflammation increases the blood flow, so that's where why you will get that red coloring, but it increases the blood flow to that area, like I said, to make sure that it gets as many white blood cells to that area as possible. Possible. Also, another reason why the area swells up is that it's also your body's way of protecting the injury, just like you would if you were wearing a moon boot when you have a broken leg. So it's kind of, um, it swells up so that it can make sure nothing else happens to that area. Now, just a little disclaimer, if the inflammation continues for too long, or if it shows up where it shouldn't, then that may cause a serious problem. So there is such thing as chronic inflammation, and if you think that the inflammation is not where it's supposed to be, or it's going on for too long, then please make sure that you consult your doctor because it can lead to serious problems. In saying this, when you consult your doctor, you don't just want to take a drug to suppress your immune system, System, but you actually want to ask them to help you get to the reason why the inflammation is still there in the first place. So it's probably because there's something else going on and your body's trying to protect you uh, from something else or your body's trying to protect you from something it perceives is a threat even though it may not be. So it's always super important to ask why rather than just to take a drug to tell your body to shut up. Also now, because I have not yet told you how to reduce inflammation naturally, what I'm actually gonna do for you is give you a free PDF download of a list of anti-inflammatory foods, which will actually help your acne to start calming down um, through your diet. So hopefully you will see a big difference with implementing those. And as promised, the magical natural product that you probably have in your pantry to combat all three is green tea. 
So I didn't actually know this when I was struggling with acne. Um, I just found it when I was going through a couple of research studies, but it is backed by science and there is more than one study that suggests that it works. So I recommend that you try this and let me know how you go down in the comments. So now that we've discussed the three things behind every pimple, I thought it was about time that my next video was my full acne story from start to finish. I'm not going to leave out any details. But if you liked this video and you want to be notified of the next one, please make sure to like it below, subscribe, hit that little notification bell and share it with your friends. Thank you so much for listening. I really hope that this video helped you to understand the root cause of your acne and I can't wait to bring you another one next week. I can help you out. I can help you out. I can help